So just to introduce myself, I'm Lisa Beard. I have got the Beauty Loft, which is an IPL and skin clinic in Stone, um, based above Francesco's hair salon. Um, I'm an advanced skin specialist, so I have um, attained many different qualifications to um, enable me to understand the skin, lots of different skin conditions, and to be able to talk to you and advise you about your skin. So hopefully you will find this of interest if you are a rosacea sufferer. If you're not a rosacea sufferer, then this will be of absolutely no interest to you whatsoever. However, it will tell you how to, how to prevent um, the onset of rosacea. So um, if you haven't got rosacea, but you know someone who does suffer, then it might be worth just sharing a little link to them with, the, with this video. Um, I'm sure they will find it useful. So rosacea is a very, very common um, skin condition. It affects a lot of people to varying degrees. Um, there are different types of rosacea. So I'll just briefly go through um, some of the different types. So it's a permanent red redness to the skin with a tendency to flush quite easily. Usually small blood vessels visible near the surface of the skin and around the, it affects the, around the nose, the cheek area um, in a kind of a butterfly shape. Occasionally the chin, um, you will possibly get a burning or itching sensation on the skin as well. And the best um, way to manage this type of rosacea is prevention. Um, so the main irritant for this type of rosacea is UV exposure. So you need to be really, really diligent with your SPF. It's not actually acne because it's not. If you were to burst one of the pustules, it would run clear. Um, they, they're kind of pus filled um, and it typically lasts sort of between one and, few, and four days and people do quite often confuse it with acne. So if you are thinking that you've got acne and you're using topical acne um, creams or treatments on your skin and it's not having any effect, then it could possibly be that it's not acne, it could be rosacea. Um, you know, rosacea is also hereditary. So although we don't know what causes it, we do know that you know certain people are prone to it, so certain skin types, so Fitz, Fitzpatrick skin types one and two, which are the fairer skin types, Celtic skin types, are more prone to rosacea. Um, and if your parents or grandparents have or had rosacea, then genetically you are more likely to suffer with it. Um, the next form of rosacea is Fimitus rosacea. And um, with the symptoms of this also include thickening of the skin and kind of nodules. So you'll sometimes see this more around the nose area and the nose starts to appear a little bit enlarged. Um, in the, it's a myth that it's actually someone who um, drinks a lot of alcohol. Alcohol certainly is one of the triggers for rosacea, but if you've got rosacea, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're a big drinker. Um, you know, so the two don't necessarily go together. It's just that alcohol can be a trigger for some people um, and it can affect the chin, the forehead, the cheeks, um, the nose, even the eyelids and the ears, you know, in, in those cases. There's also ocular rosacea, which is around the eye area. It can affect, it, um, it can make the eyes red, dry and irritated. Um, it, can, it can feel itchy um, and burning. Um, so that's known as ocular rosacea. Um, and there's not a test that you can have to confirm that you've got rosacea. So that's another thing, you know, you can't just go to the doctors and, and they can give you a test and they can say, yes, it's definitely rosacea. Um, so, you know, you, you need, to, it's kind of diagnosed when you're getting this persistent redness in the central portion of the face. Um, it's really all about management, keep it under control. So <clears throat> one of the tr triggers are extremes of temperature. So, you know, you can get flare ups in the winter, but you can also get flare ups in the summer. You know, as I've already said, you need to avoid UV at all costs in the summer. Um, 
you know, when you're going from sort of hot to cold um, areas from outdoors to indoors and it's freezing cold outside and then you're going indoors, that certainly can contribute to making it worse. Um, spicy foods, certain spicy foods can affect it. Um, we recommend that you stay away from um, caffeine, too much caffeine and alcohol and um, all these things can trigger rosacea and make it worse. If you're someone who's very much into their exercise, you know, strenuous exercise can cause that heat on the skin and make you flush. That's not going to do your rosacea any favours. Um, stress and anxiety, you know, we've all got stresses in our lives, you know, try and avoid stress when you can. It, you know, releases the stress hormone cortisol, um, which enters the bloodstream and that really does not do any favours for um, rosacea. Some people will not have rosacea at all throughout their lives and then they'll suddenly develop it when they're going through the menopause. You know, there's lots of hormonal changes, lots of things going on in the body and in the skin when we go through the menopause. So you can suddenly become um, a victim of rosacea when you get to that, that age and that stage in your life. So avoid anything like microdermabrasion. Again, that is too aggressive for anyone who has you know, redness um, on their on their skin and rosacea, um, not really recommended at all. So there's a very good website, which I think is rosacea.org. And on there, they have got um, a rosacea diary. And what it does is it's just a, an A4 printed sheet, which you can just print off, download and print off like this one. Um, and it's a good way of just keeping track of your rosacea to find out what is triggering your rosacea. So it's got certain um, little tick boxes on there and certain questions. So just to quickly run through it with you, a, a couple of examples. So check the weather conditions you're exposed to today. And then it's got options, sunny, windy, cloudy, humid, hot, cold, mild, dry. You know, you tick the relevant one which foods and beverages have you consumed today you know it's like a food diary that you can keep so have i won't go through every section but it's really useful if you're not sure what is triggering your rosacea to have a look at that and try and keep a record of what's going on in your day-to-day -day life you know that's affecting um, your rosacea and making it worse um, and it's all just part of being able to manage it so in terms of treatments then for rosacea, um, rosacea can, can never be completely cured. You know, if anyone tells you that they will completely cure you of your rosacea, then I don't believe them because it's a, 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 you know, it's something that's continually there. But what you can do is you can really um, improve it and you can manage it and you can prevent it from getting any worse. So there are topical skincare products that are specifically designed for um, more sensitive skin types and skin conditions. There are products that will build your um, and repair your natural barrier on your skin. I was about using an element barrier when you're outdoors. Yeah, so this just really is a preventative measure um, and really helps with you know, keeping your rosacea under control. Um, so I definitely would recommend that. So going back to now the treatment of choice, which is IPL, which is this lovely machine behind me here. Um, what happens with IPL? It stands for intense pulse light. And the light is attracted to three chromophores in the body. So it's attracted to pigment in hair, pigment in the skin and the hemoglobin in the blood. So um, that's why we can um, provide permanent hair removal, for example, with IPL because it's attracted to the pigment in the hair. Um, however, it's an absolutely fabulous treatment for rosacea. So I just wanted to explain a little bit about how the treatment works and what happens. Um, so the light energy is applied to the skin and it's readily absorbed by the vessels. It heats them up to a point where they will either um, what we call coagulate, which is go darker, um, and, or they will blanch and just completely disappear. So what you need to bear in mind is if sometimes, you know, immediately after a treatment, for example, your rosacea will look worse before it gets, it looks better. 
described as a hot pin prick. So it's really, it's like a flick, like, like millisecond of, of feeling that you will feel on your skin. Um, the treatment area may feel warm afterwards. We do um, post and pre and post cooling of the area. So before treatment, we call the area and after treat we, treatment, we call the area. And then we will recommend to you um, that when you get home, you know, you continue to cool that area. We also apply a, um, a cooling solution, light soothe solution after the treatment, which will also help to cool the area. Occasionally, you may get a little bit of swelling as well. That's normal, um, but that will go down. Uh, the, mo the, the most it would last for would be 48 hours, I would say. Um, so how long does the treatment take? Um, it's very quick. It just depends on the size of the area that we're treating. So it can take from 15 minutes up to 45 minutes, depending upon the size of the area, the type of lesion that we're treating. Obviously, Obviously, if it's something like rosacea, then it would usually be the whole, you know, at the bottom half of your face and across the nose area. So that would probably be about a 45 minute treatment. In terms of how many treatments are necessary, for optimum results, I would say three to five treatments are needed. Um, some lesions, some um, small thread veins can be cleared just after one treatment. So you know, you will see some improvement immediately. Um, and the treatments are spaced out every four to six weeks. So if you needed a course of three, we, they would tend to be four to six weeks apart. Um, now, as I said before, and I've kept saying throughout, there is no cure for rosacea. So what the advice would be is, you know, if you book a course of treatments and it really does um, improve your rosacea, you then need to make sure that you're using these preventative measures, you know, avoiding your triggers, if you know what they are, wearing SPF, wearing an element barrier if you're out and about doing outdoor activities to, to you know, maintain those really good results. And then what you will find is that, you know, when you do have a flare up, because you will ultimately at some point have another flare up, just get booked back in, we can get you in, give you a quick zap of IPL, get it under control again, and off you go. So it is something that you will need to maintain as a treatment, um, but certainly it will definitely improve it. And as soon as you get a flare up, we can just nip it in the bud. So that's more or less all I've got to say about rosacea. I hope you found it useful. I will put the links to the things that I've mentioned in the comments. Um, if you do want to book a consultation for an IPL treatment for rosacea or for any other um, IPL skin treatment or hair removal, we charge £25 for a consultation because it is a very in-depth consultation that takes about 45 minutes. We ask you about your health, your skin, um, your medication, your lifestyle, you know, lots and lots of questions that we need to ask to make sure that you are actually um, going to get good results from the treatment and that there's nothing that's contraindicated in terms of medication or anything like that. So we charge £25 for the consultation. Should you go ahead, that consultation fee is deducted then from your course of treatments. Um, if you decide not to go ahead, then you've, you've, you've paid your £25 consultation fee and that's it. Um, if you want to come in and book a, a skin consultation to discuss the more um, topical um, products for rosacea, the treatments, the interactive range from NIMU, um, we charge £10 for that skin consultation um, because that's a lot quicker, although we still do need to ask you lots of questions. And again, that is offset against any NIMU product purchase or NIMU treatment purchased. So hopefully that's given you the information that you need. Um, I hope you found it useful and informative and I will hope to see you again soon.